You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. Don't care what you're saying, I think I look bloody sexy. Hmm. Welcome to Chewing the Cud. This week I'm joined by the man who always has an egg. Well, it's more of a butt. Um, it's Mist. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm fine, thank you. We don't talk about that. That's why I stopped saying butt plug. Mm. Uh, what have you got for us this week, Mist? Well, this week I'm talking about a mighty morphing Power Ranger, because it's apparently the 90s, and then we have an Eastery game to play in our game of the week. And that's before we welcome Jordan Charles to the show on Spotlight. On screen now you can see our social media. Just search for at the Could TV. And as people who have popped up in our comments go along the bottom of our screen, it's time for Mike in the Buzz. Thirty seconds of war. That has already got makeup all over it. What do you um, mean it's part of makeup? No, my makeup. Oh, yeah. filthy. Anyway, roughly. Um, how do you feel about mini eggs? I, I, I quite like a mini egg. How many do you have in, in, a, in a handful? Um, I'm, I'm not. I'm supposed to be on a diet. I know, but how many do you actually have in a handful? I could, I could easily fit a couple in. A couple in. Okay. Mm. Did you know serving size is eight mini eggs? Eight mini eggs. Eight mini eggs. Not a bag. That's ridiculous. Who's going to portion out eight eggs? People are counting calories. Um, but they've been, they've been issued with a warning of mini eggs. Okay. Okay. Because basically they kill, they kill children. Um, they're a choking hazard, basically. Um, Cadbury's have, have been told that they have to put warning labels on them because people are putting them in them, children are eating them. Right, as, and, as children would, and and choking on them because they're going too quickly with them, and they're a hard shell, so it's. Isn't that really on the children not knowing how to uh, chew? Yeah, but you can't can't stop that happening. Uh, does everything you stick in your mouth have to come with a label now? No. It comes with a noise you should. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to say that. But, yeah. <laughs> We're saying it. Um, so what we're basically saying is mini eggs are not for kids. They're only for adults. Well, that's more for us then. That's that's that, what I'm thinking. I don't think that's a bad thing. No, solve the kids. Yeah, exactly. Um, do, do you have a lot of Easter eggs at home? Um, I, 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 I celebrate Ostara because I'm one of those weird, beardy weirdy type people. So um, I've already had my Easter egg. Oh, OK. Mm, yeah, nice big. I go for luxury um, rather than quantity. You go for quality rather than quantity. Mm -hmm. Right, OK. Um, well, be thankful you don't live on Orkney. Why? What's happened in Orkney? Because they've gone for uh, quantity over quality. Mm -hmm. right, well, well, the main shop has. As they've accidentally ordered 720 Easter eggs. How many? 720. It was supposed to order 80 and ordered 720. Because he kept forgetting he'd placed an order. So he just kept ordering kept again ordering and again more and more again. Easter eggs. Well, DL, what's he going to do with that? Well, what he's actually doing is, is, is doing a, a raffle to win 100 Easter eggs to try and get rid of 100 of them. But he's still got a shed load left, though. Yeah. And who's going to have 100 Easter eggs? Well, one but very, very happy person, I think. Um, but what he's actually said... Well, I was reading this news story. It's like going, oh, there's more... They're saying there's more eggs than there are people on the island, Right. Oh, because it's oh, and he's tiny. He's tiny, right? Yeah, yeah, so, how yeah. many eggs do you think each person would have to get through? Could they not just like chuck them at the uh, puffins? The puffins don't like it. The, the puffins don't like Easter eggs. <laughs> they don't like Easter egg puffins. <laughs> Renowned for not liking Easter eggs, in fact. Yeah. I, I, it's a well known fact, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Um, yeah how, how many actual people are on the actual island? Well, this is the disappointing part of the news story. It averages out at one and a half. Oh, he strikes up. exactly. I'm like, that's a day. Well, I suppose he's got to make actual sales, but yeah, but it's, it's yeah, it's one and a half a day. That's easy done. Question like, is, is, is what's 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 their facilities in terms of diabetic hospitals? Not great. <sighs> but eating three Easter eggs in one day won't give you diabetes. I mean, if you've already got diabetes, it's not going to be great for you. Or if you're pre-diabetic, it's going to push you over. But it's only three Easter eggs, it'll be great. 
They're not the massive ones. No, they aren't. No. No. They're just, yeah. They're just eggs. You yeah. can pop one of them in and not even notice. And if you can pop things in and not even notice, why not share that with us? We are at the Cud TV on social media. And that brings us to our story of the week. Now, do you like Subway sandwiches? Ooh, I, I could I could slip one of those down my gullet. Yes, you could you could take twelve inches, can you? <laughs> More than yeah, <laughs> I believe it. Um, what's your favourite Subway sub? Uh, I have to say Subway sub rather than just sub. Mm, um, I I I quite like a bit of tuna mayo. Tuna mayo? Do you mm. have it toasted? No, good. No. That, who who wants warm fish? Warm fish and mayonnaise. Mm. Tasty. Uh, well, the good news is for all Subway fans that they have launched a special Easter Subway. What's in that? Cabbage cream eggs. Ooh, sweet things and bread. Sweet things and bread. Now, the thing is, Subway bread is renowned for being sweet so much in the fact that in Ireland it's actually technically called a cake. Oh, it's yes. Like sugar in, in. Yeah, yeah, it's like American bread. Exactly. Yeah. Very sweet. Mm. But they're only going to sell 500 of them across the country. I can't imagine that's nice. You know, you know, just imagine the taste and going, hmm, I wonder what I, that tastes like. I like a sandwich and uh, uh, a cream egg for dessert. Uh-huh. Um, nom, 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 nom. Um, nom, 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 Yes, it's all going in the same place, but they're two separate events. OK. How, but how do you also feel about hot chocolate? Because that's what that is, because it's a toasted one. Yeah, but I, I, I don't I, I don't have a breadstick in my hot chocolate. OK. You're being very negative about this idea. I'll have a flake in my hot chocolate. OK. That, you can't stir a flake in hot chocolate. <laughs> you stick it in, oh, it's gone. It's just not working. And that's no longer a mug, of, is it? That's no longer a mug. <laughs> One of my favourite... mug of hot chocolate to a mug. <laughs> One of my favourite things to do with hot chocolate or coffee is get a Kit Kat. Bite off both ends, shove so, it in. So, yeah. okay. Gorgeous. Well, I'm glad that you're open-minded towards this because mm -hmm. you can only get 500 of them. There was no way I was going to get one for the, the show today. Cheapskate. I do, however... Well, it's limited availability. <clears throat> right? Okay. I do, however, have a mind of in imagination and ingenuity. You are a clever... Yeah. So, I have a toasty maker and I have made... <laughs> we make toasties. <laughs> have you cut the crusts off? I have cut the crust off. Oh, you big kids. Take a piece. <laughs> oh, go on then. Because you have to cut the... Because everybody knows that the middle bit is impossible to break. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Cheers. Ooh, OK. Mmm. That's good. <laughs> that is good. Mm. <laughs> I'm back my face for a bit of bread. Mmm. That's a taste sensation. That's a... <coughs> mm. It's definitely a taste sensation. I'm not too sure if it's a good one, but it is a taste, taste sensation. Mm. 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 It's not an easy, but it's good eat. I have mm. that. Well, thanks for that, Mike. You're not, you're not a fan of that, eh? <laughs> Look at your trays must be through. What time yet? <laughs> I'm trying to move on because I don't want to shove any more of this in my mouth. <laughs> right, I've got plenty more. Um, you don't have to eat any more of it, then. That's fine. You've tried it. You gave it a go. Mm. <clears throat> There's a lot of chewing involved in this. There, there, there is a lot of... Yeah. You have to get your mouth round it. Mm. And, and enjoy, enjoy what what spurts out of of the filling. Mm. Oh, right. So you're not you're not a fan of that then? No. Why not? Because it's 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 it's, it's like, merging two like things brioche. I don't feel feel. <laughs> Chocolate brioche is just del delightful. I know, but the balance is all wrong. The balance is wrong for what? It's just it's just too much sweet in the bread. I like I, I like a croissant with little bits of chocolate in, but it, it's it's little bits of chocolate. Okay. What are you, what are you doing? I'm going in my cupboard. It's very, okay. Can you make? Oh yes. You could also get through the caramel ones. Just saying. Um, mm. Thank you. Are we eating it now? Are we? Well, I, I, I... Okay. Um... <laughs> 
kid in a sweet shop. Right. <laughs> I'm on a diet. This is a treat. Uh-huh. Go on then. Pop it in. You've heard that before. Is, um, have you done something to this? No, I haven't done anything to it. I trust him at all. Really so, wait, I'm going to just close that. Um, see? Popped to love again. No, no, no issue. Um, mm-hmm. Subway have turned around and said, we're only going to do 500 of these. Mm-hmm. This is a great conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. Mm-hmm. Um, only going to do 500 of these. Mm-hmm. Right? They are talking about all those things that they could possibly do. Mm-hmm. Right, so coming soon, you may see a Mars bar Subway mm. or a Snickers Subway. Well, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're up for a Mars bar, but not because is that not the wrong amount of sweet? <laughs> what, mm. what is it, Skip? Little Timmy's down a well. <laughs> what? <laughs> Couldn't wait three minutes for a clear <laughs> No idea. <laughs> Little Timmy is stuck down a well, apparently. <laughs> now you're doing an impression of fucking Flipper. <laughs> everything's, everything's by the sea, it's fine. I was just saying it's very interesting. I'm not saying that I, I want to have one. Oh, right, OK. Couldn't tell what you were saying. Um, but, yeah, that's all from the buzz this week. Well, thanks for that, and it's left me with a rather nice and unusual sensation down the back of my throat. Because it wasn't warm. Pleasure as always. Um, stick around, because coming up next, we have Mist in the Celebrity Showbiz News. <laughs> You're watching Chewing a Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with the one in the hat, Mist. I think I look quite pretty, actually. Anyway, time for the showbiz news. First up, one of my favourite shows is back, The Umbrella Academy. I like The Umbrella Academy. I, yeah, I really, really enjoy it. It's just got that right sense of being offbeat it's fun it's fun yeah and thrilling exactly so it's back for its fourth season and this is going to be the final season sadly okay and uh we've had elliot page Mm -hmm. promoting it um now he's not really able to give away very very much because obviously they want it to be a surprise and interesting for us uh but they've said They're not really allowed to tell us anything, but it's going to be, as per usual, very fun, classic Hargreaves chaos and hijinks. Nice. Yeah, I am very much looking forward to it. Do these two get naked? Uh, Oh, hopefully. Mm. But they're siblings, hopefully not with each other. They're not actually siblings, though. Mm, They kind of are. They got raised together, they're not related. But mm, you don't know what's behind it all, and that's what we might find out in season four, you see. Apparently the showrunner, Steve uh, Blackman, doesn't plan to tread the same ground, and they're going to subvert the storyline and giving us an ending to end the whole season. Well, from end of last year, season three, Mm -hmm. it's a spoiler alert, if you've not watched it yet, you're too late, get over it. It has been a year. It's been a while. Um, They lost all their powers, didn't they? Yes. So it could be a very boring epi- season. Well, I mean, what can you do? <gasps> nothing. <laughs> well, I heard a rumor that oh, nothing happened. Oh, okay. Hopefully, we'll find out what's all been going on. Why they were all born at the same time. Why the, whether they are actually siblings or not. Okay. And because um, there has been romances between exactly. various so ones. It's, it's, it's already happened. Yeah. But we we will find out, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, apparently, that's going to be released on August eighth. Okay, so not not well, that's towards the end of the year, isn't it? Yeah, so we've still got a little time to wait yet, but yeah, it's, really it's in the pipeline. Yeah, yeah, cool. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> I also have a bit of a story about. Now, this might be a bit of a flashback for you. I mean, I was already kind of a little bit too old when these guys came out, really, at least on British TV. But do you remember the Power Rangers? Do, 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 do. Yeah, don't do any more of that because we'll have to pay royalties. Um, but yes. I bet we don't. I bet it's out of copyright. That's how old it is. <laughs> well, the 90s weren't that long ago. It's only been a decade. Uh, but yes, the original cast. Uh, what, what, what are you shaking? 24 head? years ago. What, what would you mean? 20... 24 years ago. No. 1999, 24 years ago. No. Oh, yeah. How depressing. Uh huh. Um, yeah, 
Anyway, um, so from the original cast of, of the Power Rangers, there's the uh, blue Power Ranger, Billy, just there on the far left. Who was your favourite out of the Power Rangers? Um, as I said, I was a little bit too old for this when they first came out, really. I was already, like, coming home from school and smoking things I shouldn't and, and, and drinking. OK. Um, at least that's how I remember it. I, I, I never really engaged with them, but I knew that they were a big thing for kids at the time. Yeah, I liked the green one because his name was Tommy, and he had a lot. He had a ponytail. <sighs> See, I kind of looked like that back in the day, so I didn't oh. know. That. I, do you know who I used to get have, shouted at me when I was at school because this is what I looked like, and oh. it won't you? It, I don't look like it at all now. Darius, do you remember Darius Dinesh from like the X Factor? He's dead now. Yeah, he's dead now, sadly. Um, and he turned out to be quite dishy as he grew up. But back when he was on X Factor with the long ponytail and the silly uh, and hit goatee me maybe beard. one more time. Yeah. That's what I looked like. And then he appeared on X Factor and I never lived it down throughout high school. Thanks, high school bullies. Anyway, that's not the story. The story. <laughs> Still suck their dicks, I didn't you? <laughs> I, I wasn't gay at that point. I didn't come out till later. Oh, okay. I did not know. Oh. Um, anyway, back on with the story as opposed to my traumatic childhood. Um, I, this, actually, it's a, this is a sad story. We should okay. think. Um, he played uh, B uh, Billy Cranston, this guy called David Yost. And actually, he had such a bad time during that show because he was gay uh, and still is. Um, but they really bullied him on that show for it. Uh, so much so that he put himself into conversion therapy. Oh, hell. Yeah. Um, it was apparently about two years, and it just completely mucked with his head, as conversion therapy would do. Yeah. Um, he said it gave it, it... He had a nervous breakdown because of it. It took him two years to become comfortable and really open about himself, and it wasn't an overnight process, and it took him a long time to be happy and comfortable. He's now an anti-conversion therapy campaigner, and he said the end result of conversion therapy were numerous thoughts of suicide, a nervous breakdown, five weeks in a hospital, and years trying to mend my mental health while operating out of survival mode. Psycho psychologically destroying and torturing me is not a first right amendment. No, nope. I mean, I think it's very prevalent at the minute because, of course, the UK and their anti-conversion therapy bills mm -hmm. still being not debated by... It's him. taking its time, yes. Yeah. But it's certainly... I perceive it to be a lesser issue in this country than it is in America, I mean, but it, well, it's I mean, still something got... we could do with legislating again. Exactly, and especially our, our trans siblings that, mm -hmm. that are continually at risk about this. Absolutely. Um, I think it's very important that he shares how traumatic it can be to go through conversion therapy. And it's good to make something positive out of a horrible experience because I'm sure the kids that were watching it back in the day did not realise that that's what was going on behind the scenes. No. Anyway, on, on to a lighter story. OK. Um, American Idol. It's still going on. It's apparently season 22. Now, I don't usually watch these kind of shows. It's just not my kind of thing. But they are big, they are popular, and it's still going. It's Luke Bryan, Katy Perry, and Lionel Richie on the judging panel now. Um, and you know the format. They go through auditions, they get to a big audition, and, and, and mm -hmm. then somebody comes out as a pop star at the end, and you never see of them or hear of them ever again. Oh, 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 oh. Kelly Clarkson. Who? Kelly Clarkson. You know who, who Kelly Clarkson is. No, I've got a, I've got a few of her tracks on See, me, Jim. She, right she was a, a, a American Idol person. Some of them do all right, but out of twenty two seasons, but it's American, isn't it? I don't know any of them. Exactly. But anyway, not that's, really young anyway, are they? That's not the point. Okay. They're going through the audition stages at the moment. Okay. And you know you know how it usually goes. You'll get some clips and stuff coming out. And there'll be some amazing ones, and then there'll be some real clunkers, and then there'll be the odd, why the hell do they even turn up, because they're just so awful. Well, one of these has come out, and it, it, kind of, it genuinely blew my mind. It's actually really good. Okay. Um, and I think that this one might be one of those more force for good things, which is really good, considering the, uh, the size of the platform. 
So, we have Amari, a bubbly 28-year-old waitress from Indiana. She does this stripped-back acoustic cover of Britney Spears' Toxic. Okay. And it's good. It's, the, oh, it's uh, not a Darius... No, 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 no. She's really good. She finishes it with a bit of a Darius moment, but it is actually quite good. She does um, that mouth trumpet mimicking kind of thing. But she's really good at it. Okay. Really good at it. <laughs> I'm ridiculous, but she's really good. <laughs> and it's the whole thing's really super cute and very jazzy and, and stripped back. And, and I really, really appreciated it. And she just has a beautiful personality. She really shone absolutely, through. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. She was just nice, affable, down to her. But Katy Perry pipes up and thinks that she might have a little bit more in her and asks her to do another song. Now, before she goes into that song, she explains why this song is important to her. And she tells the panel that she's actually transgender. Okay. And she reflects that during her transition, she actually lost a lot of friends. Um, the people in her life just walked away. She says, it's normal for, to lose a lot of people. I'm not mad at them. I understand. I don't expect people to understand everything. I want, every, I want to love everybody. So many people would have been really happy if I just stayed in my little box. And sometimes I miss that person. And then she then goes on to sing, she used to be mine from the uh, musical Waitress. Mm -hmm. And it's stunning. Absolutely stunning. She does it in this um, talk singing style. Mm -hmm. And all of the emotion comes in through that. It's it's perf um, Lionel Richard uh, Richie describes it as perfectly imperfect, and uh, it it genuinely is. If uh, you go onto YouTube, you should be able to find a clip of it rather than having to watch the whole damn show. Um, and she's amazing, genuinely. Well, thanks for that, Mist. I was going to say something wildly inappropriate, but all I'm going to say is stick around because coming up next we have our game of the week. You're watching Chewing the Cud, and this week we're going to play a game of That's Mighty Interesting, and that's for our very own bunny smuggler. That's Mist. So off you pop. OK. And the boots of your car, probably. Game of the Week. So we're going to play That's Mighty Interesting. So Mist has got a range of Easter-related questions for me, um, and I have to try and get them right. This is in no way, shape, or form a knockoff of QI. You got any questions there, Mister? Um, I do, um, and they're uh, in depth and, and and difficult, and and you're going to really struggle this week to get any questions on this quiz right. Sounds about right. Are you ready? I'm pretty not clever. <laughs> right. Okay. I hope you're ready for this. I am. Who wrote the tale of Peter Rabbit? An author. Correct. Well done. But which author, you muppet? Jim Henson wasn't an, uh, an author. No. Which author wrote the tale of Peter Rabbit? Oh. Was it um, Jessica Fletcher? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jessica Rhett Fletcher is a fictional character and, and not an actual author. Very, very famous lady, mainly because of these books. Enid Blyton. Close, but no cigar. Sorry. It was Beatrix Potter. Oh, the that's mighty interesting. So, so, OK, let's try another one. Um, what kind of bird delivers eggs to children in Switzerland for Easter? What kind of bird? Hmm. Hmm. News of, news of an ornithological nature. Oh, check out you with the long words. Yeah. Not as thick as you look. So it's a bird. Yes, it's a bird. This is a tradition in Switzerland. We have bunnies, they have... They have a bird. They have a bird. But which is type the of... the bird the word? Um, no, I'll give you the answer, because you're obviously not going to get it. It is a cuckoo. A cuckoo? A cuckoo. Oh, that's mighty interesting. What the hell? 
Okay, you're, you, you, you're blowing things away here. I'm, um, very, I'm well known for that. <laughs> I've written on toilet walls and everything. Let's try another question. Um, oh, oh, this is mighty interesting. Sorry, that's your line, but it is. Um, according to the Bible, uh, that jolly book, um, how did Judas identify Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? Yeah, yeah that's him. No. That, Set, that, sent him a tap on Grinder, and it's like... Bloop. Oh, you're getting closer. What's that? Tap on Grinder. Scruff. He woofed him on Scruff. He didn't woof him on Scruff. Uh, think to days where you didn't have such digital aids. He walked up to the went, You're right, love. You, even closer. Do you fancy a shag? He, closer. Here's 20p. What happens when a fella walks around and hanging about with 12 guys all at once? Orgies. Exactly. So. An orgy? No, it wasn't an orgy. He wiped his own semen away from his thigh. No. He kissed him. Oh, that's mighty interesting. Okay, um, the Bible is not, obviously not your thing, um, so let's try... Well, it is. Because according to different parts of the Bible, I can prove that um, we're all women. Now that's mighty interesting. Yeah. Hang on, we're doing this the wrong way round. Because right? in the Bible it says it, that we are all children of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But then later on it says that God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Well, we're all women then. That is mighty interesting. This is the wrong way round. I'm supposed to be giving you the fact <laughs> Right, back okay. to the quiz. Okay, back to the quiz. So, what is Easter known as in France? And not l'Easter. Oh. Le chocolat de. No. Um, we surrender. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. That's a song, not the name for Easter. Bastille Day. No. Brioche Day. Right, you're not going to get it. I, I, I actually don't know how to pronounce this. Um, my niece, who lived in France for a long, long time, will be very annoyed at me. Mm. Pax. Pax? Pax. P, A with one of those little figgly bits on the top of it. Q, U, E, S. No, Pax is P A X. I don't know. I don't put an O at the end French. and then it's stuffing. Pax them. And you shove it up a chicken's. Oh, that's mighty interesting. Moving on. Uh, what is the day before Good Friday called? <laughs> now, do you actually want to know the answer to this or do you want a comedy moment? A comedy moment would be a first. It would on this show. Um, so I have a memory of going on the Thursday before um, Good Friday, queuing up for a pat of butter with my gran. Because the council used to give us butter instead of money. So yeah. He said he didn't want a comedy moment, so I told you a story instead. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Uh, um... Hi, uh, what were we doing? It's Monday, Thursday. Because you get Monday money. Of course, you got it right. Well done. Oh, I'm a smart. <laughs> what is the name of the rabbit in Winnie the Pooh? Rampant. No. This rampant rabbit. He's not a rampant mm. rabbit. If I remember correctly, he's quite an old rabbit. Day. If it's if the batteries work, the batteries work. Well, got, that's not the answer. The point. name of the rabbit in Winnie the Pooh was Rabbit. That's not very imaginative. I mean, that's very interesting. Oh no! Now we talked about this earlier, actually. True or false? Easter is named after the pagan goddess Aestra. You're asking me whether it's named after a goddess called Estra. Yeah, true or false? I'm not pronouncing that correctly, by the way, but hey-ho. Well, how am I supposed to get it right if you don't even give me the right question? 
pronounce it properly. I can't pronounce it properly. That's why I pronounced it wrong. <laughs> it's a very, very old word. Nobody knows how it is supposed to be pronounced. Spell it. E-O-S-T-R-E. -E. Is the T a normal shaped T or is it a slanty T? It's not a slanty T. Okay. No idea either. I just wanted to make it sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. I know that Old English had an F, which was an S. True. According to this, yes, it is true. Um, according to other pagan authors, it's not true at all. But hey-ho, uh, that's uh, history for you. Uh, what? Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. So it either is or it isn't, it can't be both. Uh, mm, it depends on who you talk to. There are scholars. It's there commonly scholars. thought. <laughs> that's what the university system is for. <laughs> there are scholars. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, it, yeah, the people do argue. It's commonly thought as, as being that, but um, uh, I have sources that say it's not, actually. Uh, they I like do very different things. Them. Gravy on me lamb. Mm. Oh, that's mighty interesting. What does the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland always carry? Spare batteries. You are obsessed with this sex toy, aren't you? No. Look, you know when you get get something, you go, I need some batteries. Mm -hmm. You never find batteries. Mm -hmm. There's always a, someone that's got batteries then. That, mm -hmm. Remember when this was written? They weren't batteries back then. When was it written? A long time ago, before batteries. Alice in Wonderland. Yes. Lewis Carroll. Yes. Victorian times. Yes. Did that batteries? Did we? Yeah. They weren't known as batteries. I think they were. They were um, they weren't easy to move and stuff, but we've had batteries for centuries. Before batteries were common use. And, Before and a AAA, 100%. Yes. It was a watch. It was a watch. A watch. Well done. Because he was always running late. Yeah. Because he was off his tits on speed. <laughs> That's mighty interesting. But coming after this short break, we have Jordan Charles in Spotlight. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. We've had someone knock on our door, so we've let him in, and it's actually Jordan Charles. So let's get to know him in Spotlight. So welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Um, so for people that don't know who you are and what you do, you're an artist in residence. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the mill has its beautiful new fifth floor space, kind of like a multi-purpose uh, residency space um, and so yeah, I'm one of the first resident artists up there um, kind of getting to use the space to just take some time away and make some incredible work hopefully. Okay cool and so what kind of work is it that you do while you're in that space? Uh, so I'm a uh, singer and a writer and so I'm currently writing a musical and so I've been up there um, yeah, playing around with the songs and uh, kind of making puppets and kind of just trying to test out this this brand new idea. Um, and it's been, yeah, it's been a great time, actually. You said puppets. I got very excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've been working with um, an amazing uh, puppeteer, um, Caroline Adder, who, um, uh, yeah, makes uh, incredible uh, puppets out of, like, recycled materials and new um, new bits. And so we kind of, uh, yeah, got her to come and work with us and make some things for us. And she made puppets out of... Uh, um, uh, like rubber gloves and like bin bags and bits of cardboard, but they kind of yeah moved and spoke and did incredible things. I think you'd have loved it. <laughs> Perfect. What first got you into the arts? So many many years ago, when I was about uh, four years old, um, at our school we'd all do this uh, like arts festival. And everyone would get up and do uh, like a little poem, and you'd all learn the same one. Um, and there was this little poem about a chicken. Um, and my and so we all got up and did our little poem about the chicken. And I got up and did mine. Uh, and the headmistress, who was like a scary woman, she was hey. she was a you know stern, stern woman, but lovely. And she came up to my parents and she said, "That one drama lessons now." <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> and when did it become a career for you? It became a career. I've been doing it full time for about seven years now. 
Um, I did a TV show called uh, Let It Shine. Um, it was a Gary Barlow TV show, and he was kind of looking for people to play Take That in his own musical. Um, you might have noticed I don't really look like any of the members of Take That, <laughs> so it was a bit of a it was a bit of a jump. Um, but yeah, I, I, I did that show, and I was working full time at the time, and I kind of tried to do the job and uh, this, um, you know this at the same time, and they and they basically were like, you, you can't take two months off to, to go and do this show. So yeah, with no bookings, no plans, no nothing, I just quit my job mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, took a leap. Nice. So you took that leap and it's all history since then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, during the pandemic, arts took a bit of a, a pause, shall we say? Just, just a little one. Just, just, a, little one. just a week yeah. off. Um, so what was it you were doing during the pandemic? Well, actually, like directly before the pandemic was the first time that I came to the mill to work on uh, this musical, Oya. Oh, yeah? um, and I, I hadn't touched it for years. And then um, I had just kind of got myself together to start working on it again. And I did my first little residency here at the mill. And it was kind of this, you know, the start of new things, big things. And that was in January, 2020. Mm -hmm. And then obviously March, 2020, then, you know, things kind of like fell apart for everyone in the arts, really. Um, so I just kind of took the time and I, I kind of focused on other things I hadn't had the chance to really to really look at. So I didn't do I, I, I kind of I um, started writing poetry much more in the pandemic. I really that was really kind of something that really helped me get through, especially some of the like more difficult early times. I kind of, yeah, just got it out through poetry that I hadn't written in like five years. Um, and just other things, like just stuff to, to get play around with. I started to play around with makeup and kind of created a like an aesthetic um, and like clothes and started learning how to sew properly. Okay. Um, and yeah, just kind of tried things out. Banana bread? <laughs> no banana, banana bread, but no banana lots, bread? Of, okay. lots of baking. And because I'm, uh, I'm diabetic, so um, it was like lots of uh, like sugar-free baking and experimentation and okay. uh, yeah, different things. I know I had a lot of banana bread during the pandemic. So. Same here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's what's your most um, what's your biggest inspiration? I'm inspired by a lot of things, really. Kind of like quite directly, especially in the work I'm making at the minute. Um, a lot of the kind of you know big musicals that we all that we all love. Kind of people like Alan Menken. Kind of that golden age of Disney. Um, but then also like inspired artistically by by people's kind of just commitment to really being themselves and being their full, yeah, full authentic person. So people like Janelle Monet and Beyonce, you know, kind of really bringing all of themselves into the work, but it also still being really beautiful and elevated and incredible. So, yeah. Are there any page, particular themes that you work with or ideas? Yeah, at the, at the minute especially, I'm working a lot with uh, mythology. Um, the show uh, draws from uh, Yoruba mythology, West African mythology. Um, and I've always been a bit of a fantasy nerd. I love D&D &D at the moment. Um, so, like, that's, yeah, that's always a big... <laughs> Sorry, big draw. Mrs. just got very excited because you said D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have an episode of D20 waiting for me at home. <laughs> as soon as we wrap, the second we wrap. <laughs> I'll come with you. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, def big, yeah, fantasy is definitely a big, a big inspiration, a big theme. Um, and kind of tying that in with my own identity however I can, whether that's my blackness or my queerness, like kind of, yeah, bringing those two things together. Um, sorry, I'm just waiting for Mr. to go, D&D, <laughs> 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 yeah. You're desperate to what, yeah? <laughs> he's, giving me, he's giving me kind of like barbarian fighter vibes, but like with a heart of gold. Oh, like, that's, you flatterer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Heart of gold's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> heart of bronze, we're saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah heart, isn't it? Um, so with all those inspirations that you've got and all those things you can draw inspiration from, how does that come across in your poetry? I think it, it, it comes across quite directly, to be honest, because my poetry is quite, it's quite conversational. It's quite kind of, um, yeah, they could almost be, you know, more like spoken word monologues. Yeah, so I think it, it comes in quite directly because I'm often speaking from, yeah, a place of my own experience, kind of, you know, have, um, yeah, I've, I, I have a poem called I Lost, which is very much just kind of 
me and my musings about my feelings about you know my history and and access to to elders and queer elders and black elders and you know uh yeah i think it's 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 there because if i'm if i'm writing poetry it's one of the most direct forms i have of really just putting my heart on the paper okay got it and you say it's about your history what what is your history how would you describe that Oh, long and storied and only <laughs> just begun. That's how I describe it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the, 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 part, the parts of my history that, that are really important to me are, um, yeah, being a Caribbean person, living in Britain, understanding what that means historically as much as I can. Um, I'm currently reading uh, Black and British by David Oshoga, which is about, you know, the history of black people in Britain going back way, way, you know, to, to um, you know, uh, medieval times almost. Um, so yeah, kind of like accessing that as much as possible and then my identity as a queer person and how those two things kind of like, you know, interplay and have interplayed throughout my whole life. Um, yeah, just trying to a access the ancestors as much as possible through, through what I'm doing. In terms of uh, your back catalogue and everything that you have done... What I like you call it a back catalogue, but yeah, let's, let's <laughs> use that. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the most satisfying, the proudest thing that you've produced so far? Um, I mean, other than the show that we, you know, we had our sharing uh, last night at the mill. Um, other than that, very recently, I took part in a competition, uh, Pride's Got Talent. It's run by Pride in London, um, and I kind of took part in it almost, almost at a whim. Really, I kind of just had some time and and just kind of uh, really went for it. But then once I was there. I was kind of so, like, enthused and kind of really, really dove in, um, and somehow managed to fool them into giving me the the crown. So, congratulations! Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and so, yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, and 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 the and the final was at the Adelphi Theatre. So, kind of like, mm -hmm. yeah, big old West End theatre, which was a brand new experience for me. So, yeah, just kind of being able to do that and making it through was, yeah. Oof. What does the future hold? The future holds uh, spending more time uh, working on my on my own work now, working on this show. Hopefully, kind of taking it to a to a um, yeah, you know, to a full production. I are on stage somewhere, um, and just yeah, really kind of committing to myself as an artist. I think that's that's the next challenge. Okay, cool. And if we wanted to find out what you were doing and where you were up to, yeah, how would we get in hold of you? You can follow me at I am Jordan Charles on my Instagram where you can see me doing some more gay nonsense. Um, or you can follow Obsidia Collective at We Are Obsidia, O B S I D I A. Um, and you can find us at obsidiacollective.com as well, where you can find all manner of things about me and Oya the Musical and what's coming up next. And so, would you like to come back on and talk about Oya the Musical? Ah, if I must. <laughs> if you <laughs> twist my arm. Yeah, I would love to have you to come back on and talk <laughs> oh, I'd love to. Perfect. Well, that's almost the end of the show. Remember to find us on our social media. It's at The Could TV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. There we so, go. Very excited about having you on about the musical. Yeah. yeah 100%. Oh, thank you. Yeah.